Welcome to a Legendarium special about the three Capitoline gods of early Rome. In this installment, we will talk about the three gods who made up the core of the early Roman pantheon. The religious beliefs of early Romans are shown in the deliverance of their city's founders, set upon the Tiber River by their wicked uncle to murder them. The Tiber River god, fittingly named Tiburnus, carried the boys in a wicker basket to safety by calming the river's currents. Early Romans and Latins believed that such gods and powerful spirits dwelled in the features of the natural world, like rivers, meadows, and trees. This helped to explain the rhythms of nature and its sometimes inexplicable cruelties, shown in terrible storms or droughts. Totemism lived into the imperial era, shown in the veneration of legionary eagles by soldiers. These eagles received such reverence that priests cared for them in tent shrines, where the legionaries prayed to them and the priests cared for them. Should one disappear, the legion could very well dissolve itself. Originally, the Romans and Latins play, prayed to the sun and moon and other natural forces, yet after contact with the Greeks around the 600s and 500s BC, some ideas of Greek religion worked their way into Roman life. However, they did not import the Greek pantheon wholesale, merely made their own deities more Olympian. First among the gods reigned Jupiter Optimus Maximus, or Jupiter Best and Greatest. Romans worshipped him along with the other gods and spirits at a temple on the Capitoline Hill. Romans depicted Jupiter as an old man with a beard and long hair. He also carried a scepter, kept an eagle to serve as his eyes and ears on earth, and bore the cornucopia which brought plenty to the faithful. Babylonia became the first known nation to record sightings of the planet Jupiter during the 7th century BC, but Rome gave our solar system's largest planet the name of their king of the gods. In contrast to the hard-drinking and womanizing Zeus, Jupiter showed himself a level-headed god. Like the Greeks, the Romans regarded lightning with terror, a seemingly divine act that could strike down the strongest of men in a heartbeat. Yet they believed that Jupiter warned such men before he struck them down for their pridefulness and sins. Some accounts even show Jupiter compelled to confer with a divine collective called the Secret Gods of Favor before he threw a lightning bolt. Second only to Jupiter in the Roman pantheon came the Roman war god Mars, who bore scant resemblance to his hot-headed Greek counterpart Ares. Level-headed and sometimes appearing as a wolf, he protected Rome, the Roman way of life, and defended the city's borders. The Campus Martius, a field where the Romans assembled for war, bore his name. Many believed him to be the father of Romulus and Remus, the legendary twin founders of Rome. Another Roman myth told of Mars falling in love with the goddess Minerva, who proved unimpressed by his advances. Mars approached the goddess of New Year and time, Perenna, for help. However, Perenna fancied Mars for herself, so she disguised herself as Minerva and tricked Mars into marrying her. Romans celebrated this episode of Feminine Guile on the Ides of March, or March 15th, when young women sang risque songs. Julius Caesar's assassins also chose this day to murder the man they regarded as a tyrant who dishonored Roman ways. Romans named the month of March after Mars and dedicated many festivals to him. The Tibial Lustrum involved a series of rites to cleanse and bless trumpets used in war. Meanwhile, the Aquaria ensured that all would be well with the horses while on campaign. Roman commanders about to depart performed another ritual by shaking the sacred spears of Mars kept in the Regia. The commander shouted, Mars Vigilia! 
and asked for a swift and easy victory over Rome's enemies. On the 1st, 9th, and 23rd of March, the priests of the Capitoline Triad, the Salii, sang hymns and dressed themselves in ancient Bronze Age armor. This included the ancilia or figure of eight shields used in ancient times, at least ancient to the Romans. Mars again took center stage during the Equius, celebrated on October 15th when the Romans held a great horse race in the Campus Martius. No doubt the winner of the race won great honor and fame among the public, but the fate of one of the winning team's horses proved less fortunate. Priests sacrificed the animal with its head becoming a much sought after talisman by Romans. Third in the early Roman pantheon came Quirinus, guardian of the city and likely the deified first chieftain of Rome named Romulus. Centuries later, Cicero wrote that the leading men of Rome grew jealous of Romulus's power and murdered him. To cover up their crime, they claimed he ascended into heaven as a god. Regardless, Romans built the first altar to Quirinus on the Quirinal Hill, one of the seven hills of Rome. Quirinus was originally a Sabine god, just as the Quirinal Hill was Sabine territory. As they did with others, the Romans conquered the Sabines and made their territory part of the Roman state and their god part of the Roman pantheon. Since the Romans believed the myrtle tree sacred to Quirinus, they planted two outside his shrine, one called Plebeian and the other Patrician. Pliny the Elder wrote that when the aristocratic senate gained power, the tree called Patrician grew green and strong. Rome further honored Quirinus with four festivals, the main one being the Quirinalia on February 17th. Not much is known about this festival, but Aura, the goddess of hours, became his cult partner. Devotees also dedicated Stultorum Ferre, a day for roasting grain, to Quirinus. While it may never be certain if Romulus and his twin brother Remus lived and died, the Romans treated them as the venerated and historical founders of their city. Indeed, the cave where the she-wolf supposedly suckled the two boys became an ancient tourist attraction during the late Republic and early Imperial eras, and today the story of Romulus is part of the firmament of Western culture. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.